what happened uh, in, in the modem case was we hit the 56K modem barrier. It was impossible then to make an a analog modem go any faster. And so that whole in industry space is pretty much gone. Uh, what's happened here is in really starting in early two, uh, 2011, uh, we, we saw the transition away from uh, single user USB devices or embedded modules to what can be multi-user mobile hotspots, first in the form factor of the puck, and then you know, and in a much bigger way, you know, now to the smartphone, whether that be an Android device or an iOS device, uh, that radical change had a profound effect on our business case. Uh, our single largest product going into 2011. Uh, was our basic c c connection manager, and if you were, you know, any of the North American carriers, you all bought that product from from us. And what we've seen is that uh, that tra transition it happened faster than any of us. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you're talking to us or you're talking to a carrier. We all will tell you the same same thing. We were we we were surprised by how fast the change, the, you know, the user went to the to the mobile hotspot. So, you know, we've had to then change our business case along with it. The fortunate thing for us is we were profoundly profitable for a number of years and threw off very strong free cash flow. We had a pretty good cash balance. We had invested heavily in tech technologies going back two to three years. And the, all this new technology is now coming to the marketplace. So our business case, while it went through a lull, uh, now looks like it could come back stronger than it ever was. Uh, but utilizing you know, newer tech technologies, multiple technologies, which takes a lot of risk out of our business case. Uh, and we also, for the first time, are seeing strong activity outside of North, North America, where, where we had been fairly North American centric uh, we now see a lot of activity in, in LATAM, in, in, in Asia PAC, as well as, as Europe. So I think coming out of this period, we're going to be a much stronger com company. We'll have multiple products, uh, you know, running fairly much around, around the world so we won't have customer concentration issues. And it's, it's, a, it's a very, very exciting time. Well, the, the QuickLink Zero product really speaks to a, to a need that, uh, in, in the marketplace right now. Uh, first off, one of the issues with USB de devices was how a user would get, you know, he would go to the carrier store, he'd get a USB device, he'd sign up for, for wireless data service, he'd get a copy of our software, and he would have to go back and try to install it on his PC or his Mac and somehow magically get it all to work. And the issues were, you know, you'd have driver issues, you'd have a lot of issues that could cause problems for that user. Now, if the user runs into any issue at all, the first thing he thinks is, well, this isn't gonna work for me, I'm gonna package it all back up, take it back into the store. The QuickLink Zero says the application now resides in that USB device or in that mobile hotspot de device, you don't have to re necessarily install anything on your com computer and you don't really therefore have to worry about drivers or anything like that, yet the carrier can still have a user uh, ex experience that's defined to them, it's branded to them, that kind of works the way they see their business case working and is the same experience no matter who makes the piece of hardware. So you have a common user experience, a branded user experience, and an ease of, ease of use. That's what QuickLink Zero is all about.